Welcome back to MotoGP. I'm back at Silverstone again. This time I'm with Ducati and it's all about electric. It's all about the Moto E Championship. As you probably know, Ducati are fully sponsoring this round, but they're not just sponsoring, they're providing all of the motorcycles. So they've developed a whole new electric race bike just for this championship. And I'm here to learn a little bit more about it. As you can see, unfortunately, the weather is a little bit moist. Um, not ideal, is it, to mix electric motorcycles with plenty of water? We will see. We've got a little chat with the technical director of the project, and we're going to have a good old poke about, get our noses into all of these bikes and see what it's all about. So if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a cuppa. I suggest something warm, because it's a little bit chilly here today. Chopsy, roll the intro. You didn't know I had my own race team, did you? I'm here with Roberto Carne. Apologies to my Italian pronunciation, <laughs> it's, it's very, perfect. very bad. First of all, thank you very much for giving you, taking your time out your busy yeah. weekend to speak yeah, to no us. no problem. Um, what's your exact role then with the Moto E project then, Roberto? Uh, well, exactly. Yeah, what's, what, what's, your, what's your role? What's your role? My role, I'm... Official title. Yeah, let me say I'm the responsible of this uh, project. Uh, my official title is the e-mobility director. Wow. Yeah, especially because I moved, I'm formerly the responsible for electronics in the Ducati Corse, but now, yes, I'm uh, so, yeah, so the, the manager of a new, brand new group yeah. uh, for, so, for the electrification. So, so you were the electrics man, you, you yeah, the new exactly. project of the electric bikes. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly yeah. that. Okay. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, um, just tell me that uh, I was the very first involved in this project, Let yeah, me, yeah. let's Fantastic. say like this. So you from the bottom, you know yeah, everything about these yeah, bikes, yeah. right under the, the ground. Exactly, we have the, to build a, a group from ground up yeah. because there were nobody in Ducati at the start of the project who yeah. was able and had the, the knowledge for electrification yeah, for yeah. the yeah. the electric powertrain yeah. and uh, designing, uh, simulating, designing and building this yeah. kind of some motorcycle. Yeah. So it was very exciting. And why did Ducati want to get involved with the Moto E project? What was the yeah. main driver behind it? Yeah, the, the main driver was to uh, achieve two goals. One, uh, still uh, working in the competition, you know, in the racing world, we, the, the DNA of Ducati is in the racing, yeah. uh, you know, with the MotoGP, World Superbike and so on. But uh, on the other side, uh, for us, uh, the Moto E is a fantastic, uh, let me say, advanced R&D department for developing uh, this new kind of a motorcycle yeah, because, yeah. you know, we, we had no experience in the world of electrification. So we decided that the Moto E was a very good uh, test bench to start with. Uh, in order to yeah. design and, so uh, and just to learn more about uh, the technology uh, yeah, and hopefully exactly. trickle down one day yeah. to potential road exactly road yeah, exactly yeah. that's uh, the, the, the 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 our goal to to start uh, to learn uh, to um, prove uh, everything uh, start with a controlled environment you know uh, racing uh, yeah. environment is very controllable very very stable you don't go on the road immediately so you have the possibility to understand better in a controlled environment uh, the behavior of what you yeah. did yeah. and then uh, the idea is to go in the future yeah. on the road yeah. <laughs> this is the, well, the battery this, this is the, the battery, battery pack this, yeah. exactly and, and designing the bikes did you sort of with, with the audi group did you any sort of sharing of information around the electronic mm. stuff that the batteries yes uh, not uh, exactly the batteries or particular uh, let me say device uh, we had the general uh, approach with audi group let me say uh, they were very open to us uh, to help us uh, to uh, learn how to work, let me yeah, say. Yeah. And uh, so um, we had a very good collaboration with all the um, brands uh, uh, of the VW group, in particular with the Lamborghini, for example, yeah, Audi, yeah, Volkswagen, yeah, yeah. Porsche, that uh, are very 
involved in uh, uh, yeah, IE, yeah. IE performance electrification. So we had uh, more uh, suggestion from them. And then, of course, uh, we had uh, to work <laughs> to find how to, to work yeah. and to do uh, everything by ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and what were the biggest challenges with, with this project then? Because, you know, it's, I guess, range, you know, oh, there's a lot of heat generated yeah, with, you're right. with these engines as well, isn't there? Yeah. Let me say two things. What is not technical, the other, yes. Yeah. The not technical one is, uh, is uh, amazing, in my opinion. The group that works for Moto E is made uh, of people coming from uh, Ducati course and from production. Okay. So the biggest challenge was to put uh, those uh, two so different uh, minded the people to work together. Yeah, yeah. So it was very, very challenging, but uh, fantastic in my opinion. And uh, on the other side, exactly, is this part. Uh, this part okay. is the, the, the most challenging one because, you know, we had the two uh, reach three and, and the two, to, how can I say, find the compromise between uh, three parameters that are completely different, that is the range, the power and the weight. Yeah. So we had to find and to define how much energy to put, how big and to be the electric motor, to reach the weight, reduce the weight. And we found that for us this is the best compromise. For example, Dorna gave us uh, weight limit, uh, we decided to go also below that uh, limit so because that was a ma a maximum limit, maximum limit yeah. uh, it, it was uh, 137 kilograms. Uh, the bike is two, uh, sorry, 237 uh, kilograms. Uh, the bike is 225. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. So uh, we decided to make it lighter in order to add, uh, uh, get uh, a bike that is uh, better rideable. Uh, uh, have better performance. Uh, we decided to, to shrink the bike, yeah. let me say. Yeah, yeah. Have a smaller bike, because in our opinion was uh, better to do a smaller yeah. bike than a bigger, powerful, but very heavy to, to handle bike. So, so you knew it was eight laps of motor, is it uh, eight laps of motor it did, Yes, it depends on the circuits, of uh, okay, course, yeah, because the, distance, uh, the yeah. distance is different, uh, the power consumption yeah. is different. Uh, for example, here in Silverstone, we will run only for six laps, oh, okay. while in Mugello are seven, yeah. for example. It depends uh, on the circuit. And were those limits, that the race distance set by the technology, or was that a, a, to something Dawn has said you had to be able to meet this many laps and you're designing for that? Yes, so uh, it's, uh, no, the, the limit was um, given us by Dorna, to, yeah. to be honest, but uh, of course, uh, it's a matter of, uh, of also of cost, let me say. We can have uh, build uh, the, the different batteries with different performance, uh, but using, for example, cells coming from labs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they are very, very expensive. We could, right. you know, it, it's so not it's a, worth a, a cost, to, uh, a cost, yes, so also cost of performance. Balance. performance. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, and the actual design of it, it's, it's a bit like the. Panigale, isn't it? Where, yeah. you, where you've got the central component, <laughs> yeah, the right, engine, right. well, not the engine, but the battery, the battery, and then the other elements are bolted onto that. Is that you're right? right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh, you know, the <coughs> R&D department uh, is uh, a, again a mixer of people of uh, racing department uh, and the production department. So there are a lot of people also yeah, that yeah. designs uh, Panigales and also other bikes. Uh, so. We put together a lot of heads uh, yeah, yeah. and we found uh, this, uh, yeah. this layout that, in my opinion, is uh, fantastic. And, and is that different to the older energy conversions? Is that, yes. Is that more, it, that? Yeah, it, it's uh, completely different uh, because uh, Energica, you know, it, it's uh, a, a trellis frame, yeah. external trellis frame with, uh, a, um, let me say, more regular shape yeah, battery yeah. in the middle. We decided to... to have, let me say, a proper racing bike to uh, use a completely different approach. Yeah. And uh, so we decided also to use the battery as a stress part of the frame. The yeah. battery is designed together with the front frame, the rear frame, the seat tail, etc., to behave exactly like, for example, a, super, a Ducati Superbike in terms of weight distribution and also stiffness. Yeah, yeah. Is, that, is that why it's carbon outer shell? Yeah, 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 it's yeah. Ca full uh, carbon, 
there are two shells uh, bolted together yeah. and uh, inside of course all the the, the cells and the yeah, electronics yeah. part but uh, the the shells are designed and uh, how can i say cfd uh, we made a lot of uh, CFD simulation in order to get uh, the the torsional, the torsional strength. Stre yeah, yeah, strength yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, oh, wow. uh, and what, what would you say is the biggest sort of innovation with this? Because yes, I've I heard something so. about the cooling, the sort of central cooling through the battery. Yeah, no, the, the cooling is very very important. It was another challenge. Uh, because uh, another constraint was to have uh, a bike that was uh, immediately ready after the race to be recharged yeah. and also immediately ready after finishing the, the uh, finishing charging uh, the, the battery to be uh, used for the yeah. uh, next race. So, no, no, uh, the, the cooling and also we have to run in every uh, environmental condition. Now it, it's raining, but you can imagine yeah, uh, the, the, oh, the 40 degrees. 40 maybe. degrees, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We, so we had to work a lot on the cooling system. So we decided to split the cooling system in two. Okay. And one is dedicated to the battery. Uh, the bigger radiator that uh, you can see there is dedicated to, to the battery because uh, the cells must stay at, let me say, relatively low temperature. Yeah. And also because uh, uh, during uh, uh, recharging, uh, we um, keep uh, the water flowing. Oh, so uh, and yes, okay. with a fan, uh, we yeah, cool down yeah. uh, the battery. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, and the other smaller radiator, uh, uh, it's uh, dedicated to the motor and uh, to, to the inverter to cool them uh, during yeah. uh, racing. So yeah. is, 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 is heat ever an issue during the race? Or, or yeah. It is sometimes still, uh, even yeah. with all that cooling, it's sometimes it's still... Th yes, we are, if we reach 40, Degrees, let me say, yeah, we yeah, are yeah, at, yeah. at the limit. <laughs> You're getting a little bit worried. Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. But anyway, we made a lot of tests uh, in a very harsh uh, condition, and uh, the system was working fine. So, <laughs> is there any further developments to come, or, or is the project sort of there now, or is it always continually being, yeah. being worked on, developed? Yes, yes, we'll yeah. keep on developing it. Uh, as uh, for us, uh, uh, as you can imagine, is uh, the, this championship is an advanced R and D yeah. uh, test lab. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, and also together with Dorna, we have agreed to have uh, small changes during uh, the years. Uh, and, but, uh, you know, as it's a uh, uh, proving ground for us, uh, yeah, yeah. maybe we'll... Uh, and, and do you think, it, how close is this technology to, to being put into a Ducati production model, do you think? Uh, are, is yeah. it one year, two years? Or yeah. do you think this technology isn't, isn't going to be what's going to go into a production machine, in your okay, opinion? Okay, yeah. It, um, of course, uh, the technology of uh, carbon fiber uh, or all the lighter part that you see here are dedicated to racing uh, yeah, bikes. Course, so yeah. we are working to, uh, right now, I mean, uh, to uh, build uh, some other prototypes uh, that are more close to road bikes. Okay. So uh, I, I think it would be very interesting to uh, make an experience also on uh, road bikes. But uh, the technology, especially for the cells, uh, in our opinion, is still not ready for, let me say, big displacement uh, yeah, yeah. bikes where you need to have a very lightweight uh, bike, uh, long range and high power. Yeah, yeah. So it will need uh, Few years, few years. So, yeah, yeah, to have another. So of, of the future technology which is coming, like we've got the solid yeah. state battery. Yes, do, for example. Do you think that could be, do, do you see that as being yeah. you know, the, the key to making it all potentially work? Or? Yeah, the, the um, solid states is a very interesting uh, technology. Uh, I don't know, still haven't uh, tested it. I don't know it, if it would be the answer for production bikes. Yeah. So. Maybe we'll need uh, some a other, a few steps more. Well, I guess yeah. you have to test it racing yeah. to see yeah. if yeah. it's any good, won't you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Your really thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. much. Thank you. <laughs>
We've been out, watched the racing. Unfortunately, Dorna regulations, I can't show you any of the racing, but we've been right on to the pits and actually watching the race from the pits. It's been quite amazing watching the Motor E race from the pits. And I've been on the grid. I've had the, hello mate. I've had the full, full MotoGP experience today and it's been absolutely amazing. But yeah, just to be on the, in the pits, I stood by the boxes, watching all the data they've got. And they're so fast, those bikes. I'll see if I, I'm, Apparently, I'm going to be sent some stock footage so you can sort of see what's uh, and how quick these bikes are, but it's quite amazing. The race is actually over now, so the bikes are coming back into the, the pit, let's call it, and they've got a spare bike over there which wasn't actually used in the race, so they're discharging that one before these get packed up and shipped off. So that's discharged back into the into the grid, if you like. You can see on this one where the front frame just attaches to the battery, so it's like a Panigale on the concept, you know, where, where the, the actual battery it's like the stress member and everything else just bolts to the battery. Exactly like the Panigale with the way everything bolts to the engine. It's a very, very similar concept on these. You can see how thick that carbon fibre is. You can imagine the cost of these, these components are incredible. The, the, the thick, it's about, well, it's, it's about five mil thick, that carbon. And that acts as a, you know, a safety to enclose, as an enclosure for the battery, as well as to provide the rigidity. So, uh, Quite an incredible bit of kit. That's it, all done. I'm going to retreat back to Ducati UK to uh, dry out because it is rather wet here today. So I hope you enjoyed that. It was really interesting for me, that MotoE uh, project. And a massive thank you to Ducati for inviting me along because I found it absolutely fascinating. And I hope you have too. So uh, until next time, guys, see you later.